Vernon's waiting inside. How did it go? Did you get him? The Kingslayer fled to Vergen in Edern. He forced Triss to teleport them both. Damn, he's made a mockery of us! If that's how he wants to play, I'll make him regret it. I heard you have news for me. Lorido has a deal with Kedwin. That merchant living in his house is Hensolt's agent. For a pouch of gold, the good commandant promised to support Kedwini troops in the event of a conflict. So what now? I want that spy to squeeze him for information. And I've sentenced Commandant Lorido to death. Roach, we have to sail. We need to get to Edern. I'm not leaving until I deal with Lorido. The spy may know something about the Kingslayers. I wouldn't be surprised if Henselt of Kedwin was behind all this. All right, let's deal with this spy. Listen very carefully. I'm not repeating this. We have two targets. The first is a Kedwini spy, Arnold Malaga. I want him alive. The other is Bernard Lorido, the trading post commander and a traitor to Temeria. We don't let his kind live. Arnold almost never leaves the residence, so we need to strike there. To get inside, we'll use Vess's unusual talents and Bernard's habits. Stop calling him by his first name. It really rubs me the wrong way. Whatever you wish. Lorido's house. The first floor contains guest quarters. Geralt had the opportunity to take a look. Regular patrols. Second floor. Lorido's bodyguards' quarters. They think they're the toughest warriors this side of the Yoruga, but really they're lame drowners dressed in colorful gambesons. Third floor. The lion's den. Here, Lorido stores plundered valuables. It's where he sleeps, shits, and wanks off while staring at the statuette of a she-elf. Only the following are allowed to enter. Arnold Malaga, Lorido's mother, his cousin, and whores. <laughs> I'm not sure I still have that frog. After making his round of the trading post, Lorido always orders two ladies. Vess will act as one of them. The house is a bloody fortress, but Lorido had it enlarged. The Witcher will enter through the extension. Vess will open a window for you. Once in, you'll have to improvise, Geralt, but you'll have the element of surprise. Vess can hold her own, too. Zenon and Rickard will cover you from vantage points. If things get hot, lure those horsens near the windows. I'll be in the courtyard with the rest, ready to enter in the extreme. I repeat, in the extreme. That's all. Any questions? No? Let's get to work. Morning, morning, damn it. Your chariot awaits, fair youth. The good spirit of this tower will guide and protect you. <laughs>
you what do you want the key to the upper quarters I know you have it you want to free the elven girl your efforts are in vain like an Ithleen's prophecy the seed has been planted and will soon sprout. shut up and give me the key the key the key uh, where did I put it <laughs> Dress like a whore, behave like one. First I'll plow you, and then I'll slice off your tits. Does that strike your fancy? Cut off your own whore, son! Oh, I love it when bitches bark.
It's a trap! Look out! Demovent should have killed all you freaks! Kill the son of a bitch! Make him die in pain! I'll do the world a favor by killing a mutant! Geralt, with no time to lose. She needs help. We need to get her out of here. Thanks, Geralt. I heard something behind that door. Don't leave me here. Please! You don't look like a whore, Elf. My name is Morrill. What month is it? This is no time to chat. Can you walk? I'll not stay here any longer. Even if I must crawl out. She won't make it through the garden, Geralt. We must leave by the front. Lead the way. We'll be right behind you. So, what month is it? Lammas. Autumn's begun. When they kidnapped me, it was snowing. And the child's father is... This child has only a mother. When I realized I was pregnant, I wanted to kill myself. Don't say that. I am N. Shay. I... I can't make it. I think I... Damn. The water broke. There will change of plans. But... Back to the tower. I need a clean bed, hot water, and some time. We can't be disturbed. Go get help! Warning! Intruder in the tower! Anybody there? Speaking! Are we?
Geralt, I see we're in time. Where have you been, Roach? A little problem along the way. The Temerian Special Forces, created by Foltes to combat the Skoyatal after the first war with Nilfgaard. Veterans, professionals, the best of the best. This is the end, Roach. See these emblems? Temerian lilies, that's all I lacked. I've defeated the commanders of all the Special Forces in the North. Now I shall unite the Skoyatal. Finish what you started. I shan't kill you, Roach. We Enshe never kill the last specimens of dying breeds. Live on and remember who defeated you. Remember he can do so again. Va fail, Vernon Roach. You're making a mistake, Jorveth. I will find you. The horseman ran away, but I'm sure he'll show up again. Bloody non-humans. Enough of Jorveth. What's with Laredo and where's Vess? Laredo's dead. I saved Vess, barely. What happened? Your plan was hardly the most. A boy, Geralt! A healthy what boy! Is? Whose child is that? Morals. Who's? We found an elf woman Laredo kidnapped almost a year ago. He was the father. I'd never touch a she-elf. <laughs> Enough! We don't have time for that. The ship's waiting. Why did you do it? Why? I hate this town. Prepare the boat. We sail immediately. What about the kid? It's not coming with us. And who in this hellhole will take in a half-breed? Saharam. Take it to Saharam in Lobenden. And make sure to tell him it's Morrill's child. The assassin had had his day. Very true. He'd kidnapped Triss Marigold. It seemed like Foltis' life had not been enough. It seemed like the killer also wanted the monarch's former advisor. There was no time to think. It was time to act. Grabbing Geralt, I embarked on a voyage upriver, deeper into the Pontar Valley. There, in a region known as Lormark, King Henseld of Kedwen had made camp with his army. King is the key word here denoting the central figure in my plan to capture the Kingslayer. The special forces of King made the soil light lightly upon him. Foltest had lost some of their customary enthusiasm, treating us to not one single joke of the how many ways can you skin an elf variety. 
which only goes to support my theory that the human mind is capable of producing a finite amount of horror before some manner of reflection springs itself upon it. Must have been a massacre! Bones everywhere! How in the world did Cleversig harness so much of the power? Do you always get so excited at the sight of skulls, Death Mold? <sighs> Scoff all you want, I speak of magic! The kind of spells that win wars, thousands incinerated in seconds! Ah! Power, destruction, annihilation! Yes, after which Sabrina Cleversig was burned at the stake. And the Pontar Valley remains within Edern's borders. Edern is a carcass. Still showing life signs, but the realm's days are numbered. No peasant revolt can change that. You're wrong, Deathmold. This country lives. I can feel it. Like an old wounded bear covering scars, hounds all round it, but still strong. Still deadly. This will be a good war. But sire, the Edernian barons won't dare stand against you. You shall see that shortly. I've prepared everything. Greetings, Your Grace. Hail to Henselt. To Tanserville, can you feel that? Magic still beats strongly in this place. Shivers run down my spine. Hmm. Strange. Levasig's quadruple sun is a short duration spell. It should have dissipated long ago. An anomaly, not uncommon. The sheer amount of power she summoned. Sire, I doubt long live the king! Stop discussing Sabrina Glevasig, for I promise you that heads will roll. Baron Fellat has forever hinted Long live that he would gladly change his Cadwin, Always and forever! Scum. The other nobles are panic-stricken at the very thought of Saskia with her peasant and non-human rebels. They are unprepared to fight and know it very well. And Demovin's cob? Has he named his price? Prince Stennis has yet to respond, but Fellat has assured him. I must see him. Look into his eyes. I'll know what he's made of then. We most humbly greet His Majesty Henselt, King of Kedwan, heir to the dynasty of the Unicorn, Lord of Ard Kareg, Archduke of Barnard, and Vanquisher of Nilfgaard. Welcome to Edern. How much do you want? Your Majesty surely jests. I couldn't be more serious. How much for your signatures? A hundred thousand Novigrad crowns, we thought. To each of us. And the titles of Marquis. Oh, We speak of Upper Eden. Of coal and silver mines. Numerous factories. The sole white marble quarry this side of the Yuruga and the North's main east-west trade route. We speak of Lawmark. I advise you to adopt the new nomenclature. In exchange, we shall swear fealty and acknowledge your majesty as sovereign of these lands. You'll receive 50,000 apiece and no additional titles. Also, you'll provide guides and supplies to my army. My men will install themselves in your castles. Your armed men will gather under Sorcerer Deathbolt's command and will set out to quell the peasant rebellion. Sire, the common folk will hate they simply won't understand. Yes, Felot, they will hate you, but at least this way you'll live. Comfortably, I might add. Refuse and die by my hand, or that of Saskia the Dragon Slayer. Sire, 
We accept your conditions. Deathmold, the scroll. Sire, there is yet the matter of Prince Stennis and his rights to these lands. So long as he lives, <clears throat> so long as the Prince lives, he'll force his claims. Then kill him, Philot. <laughs> Sire, I'm no warrior. In that case, shut up and sign. Sawyer, the Dragon Slayer approaches, white flag in hand. Excellent. Let her pass. What are you waiting for? Pick up those quills and sign. Just out of curiosity, what does Upper Eden sell for these days? Fifty thousand. How much would you have demanded, lass? King, command your vulture to shut his beak before I thrust his cockerel up his arse and twist so hard he'll crow until noon reverts to morning. I... Sire, you must have her restrained. Oh, will you bully me as well? Anything to save Eden, King. A whore, after all. Deathmold may not be the bravest soul, but he's right in one respect. Were I to restrain you, there would be no war. You're either very brave, or very stupid. Will you hear me out, King? Or must we continue our threats and insults? Tell me what you want. King, withdraw your army, recognize Upper Eden's sovereignty and your persecution of non-humans, and give them leave to quit your realm. Do this, and save yourself and your army. <laughs> you have balls, woman, but what would I gain? My soldiers would call me a coward. I am Henselt of Ard Kareg. I'll not run from a woman, even if she be a dragon slayer. I see one other solution. You and I, King, here and now, before these folk and the gods, I challenge you. As in the old days, when the Honourable ruled this world, Upper Eden to the victor! The lass has gone mad to challenge a king. Sire, this is absurd. We shall crush them in battle. They say the lass has slain a dragon. She could be dangerous. I find you fetching, girl. And I want you alive. I want you and this country. You'll need to take Vergen first. Oh no, you, then Vergen, then the whole of Eden. Grab her! <laughs> In the name of Kreev, Freyr, and Militele!
Hey, halt! What's with you, Zivik? Booze made you batty. Don't you recognize me? I'll be ploughed and damned. Why the hell did you bring him here, Roach? He's a witcher. I know who the horseman is. Ploughing Kingslayer at the gate of a king's camp? Why, he's not even bound. Easy, lads. The witcher's no murderer, I'll vouch for that. As for kings, well, I desperately need to see yours. You're in for a wait then, Mr. Special Mission Knight. Hmm. Don't move, mutant! One of you go get the sergeant, and while you're at it, fetch a solid piece of rope to bind the freak. Come on, Zivik, no need for that. Where'd you say the king was? Out in the field somewhere, negotiating. Hey, Kingslayer, drop your weapons, or do I need to pack a bolt up your ass? Don't move! Don't even twitch, mutant! Hands where I can see him! Shoot! Smash the freak! What the fuck?
Damn it. Death Mold, Sheila, meet me in my tent. You're to explain what the hell happened there, and how we're to get rid of it. As you command, Your Majesty. I'll tolerate no delays on this matter, and summon all my company commanders. Immediately, Your Majesty. Corporal, 
I'd like you to watch the Witcher closely. He just pulled me from a magic hell, so I doubt he wants my head as he took fall tests. But I'll not have him wandering round the camp like some stray dog. Occupy him for a time, then bring him to my tent. Sire, I must request an audience. Later. I'll see my mages first, then the Witcher. Ah, just lovely. And here I'd hope for a calm little war. Know where I might wet my throat around here. Roach, willing to vouch for this overgrown urchin? He did not kill Foltest or Demavend, if that's what you're asking. You've got my assurance on that. Good enough for me. Let's go then! Armorer. Busy as ever with military commissions, but he'll take a private commission from time to time. Ah, we're here at last. The canteen, the most important place in the camp. If you ever get bored, you should find a monster contract or two on the notice board. Here's where the king organizes tournaments. All glamour, ceremony, noses and cocks in the air. Between those, we kill time thrashing about with swords, pikes, chairs, the works. Good stuff, no holds barred. They pay well, too, if you know who to talk to and who to bet on. Excuse me a moment, Witcher. How did the fight go? You've a nose for this, Zivik. You won again. My gold? You gonna bet on more fights today? Of course. I'll come by later. See him, Witcher. Loosen his bonds a bit and he's liable to jump at your throat like a rabid mutt. One of your Viscoya tail. How did you capture him? Scouts found him wounded in the ravines. Someone massacred a small unit. The boy said it was a bloodbath, as if the Reaper just swung his scythe right through them. Whoever attacked them was very strong. Any idea who it might have been? No. But if they manage to ambush elves in the wild, I'd rather not meet them. Right, Civic. Let's go see the king. How's it going, lads? I can't feel me plowing feet from all this standing around. Any chance you'll be sending up some replacements? In an hour. Open up the gate. The king wants to see the Witcher. Ah, uh, yeah. Go straight to the royal tent. You can't miss it. I've a few things to take care of. Godspeed, Zivik. I'll be near the main gate if you need me. So long. Ha! A Witcher! The king must have summoned him to fight the raid. I'm certain. Ha! Let's see you deal with the blood curse. Ten silver on the curse. I wanted that bet. Nearly everyone hunts you, yet you live in spite of that. Impressive. I find it hard to wean myself off life. As do we all. However, in all my career as an ambassador of His Imperial Majesty, I have never met anyone quite as talented at surviving as you. I took the liberty of checking some rumors about you. I'll say it again. Impressive. Are you seeking employment? 
I was unaware you fellows hired yourselves out for battle. My aim here is different. Really? Perhaps I can be of assistance. Voltest was a good king. Shame he ended that way. I've already conveyed the Emperor's condolences to Constable Natalis. Since we're talking about Temeria and Voltest, apparently the fallen king's advisor, the sorceress Triss Merigold, has disappeared in mysterious circumstances. Rumors abound. Do you know anything about her? Why do you ask, Excellency? I heard the two of you are close. Mages have a natural tendency to disappear into thin air once in a while. Why is anyone concerned? Maybe they wonder if witches locked in dungeons possess the same capacity. You're avoiding the subject, which means it's uncomfortable for you. Have it your way, I shan't press. But I'll ask one more question, if I may. Of course, Your Excellency. I mentioned Triss because, I must admit, I am perturbed. Mages are known for their mutual envy and rivalry. I wonder if there's any matter that could unite them. Perhaps you could be a bit clearer, Excellency. Then I shall ask directly. Do you know anything about Merigold's involvement with an organization of sorceresses? Assuming, of course, that you are, theoretically, or have been, close. Maybe she's involved, maybe she's not. Chris has her friends and I have mine. Undoubtedly. Wandering poets, dwarves with terrorist contacts, and special forces agents. It's certainly true you diplomats are experts at gathering information. How else would we negotiate effectively? Learning all there is to learn about other countries is a necessity. Nevertheless, I thank you for your information. Was there anything else? Why are you so interested in this organization of sorceresses? I wonder about some strange coincidences. I'm told several of them were seen in the vicinity when the assassination attempts occurred. What's so suspicious about that? Mages have always thronged around monarchs, the source of power and coin. I'm not accusing anyone. I merely said, it makes me wonder. I saw you with Foltest before. Now you're with Hensel. No doubt you'll visit the King of Redania next. I need not go far. Radovid is en route to Loch Muin. Perhaps he has already arrived. We'll meet there. Loch Muin? An ancient elven city quite a ways away, near the source of the Pontar. Why there? The mages wish to re-establish their council. They sent out invitations to all the kings. What's the Emperor's envoy doing here? Satisfy my curiosity. The last unfortunate conflict left the Northern Kingdoms in pitiful economic condition. His Imperial Majesty desires stability. We wish to offer financial assistance, so I'm visiting those lands hardest hit by the war. Hensel is coping admirably as far as I can see. The details of my visit here are reserved for the Emperor and the Kedweni King. I need to know everything. <laughs> Magic will not help you. I'm very well protected against such attempts. Come in, Witcher. I wish you to feel at ease as this is an unofficial audience. You help me in the mist, thus I surmise you do not seek my death. Which leads me to ask what you do seek here, Geralt of Rivia. Peace and quiet, sire. I need to clear my name. Though I tend not to meddle in politics, this time I believe I have no choice. Hmm. You must answer quickly and unequivocally. You must be clear, Witcher. I'm in no mood for excuses hiding behind professional codes and trade secrets. Did you kill Foltest? No. Do you know who did? A Witcher named Letho. Do you know each other? I don't know. I have amnesia. Letho has suggested he knows something about me. It's possible we met before. There's an old kid when he's saying, a bitch will never bite another bitch. A hundred percent accurate where sorceresses are concerned. To the matter at hand, sire. 
de Tarnasaville claims this Letho is in the area. Is that true? Yes. What does he want here? My head? He's hiding from Jorvith and his Scoyatel. I don't know his plans. And you aim to get him? I do. Last question. Do you know who had Foltest and Demabend assassinated? Who's behind the Kingslayers? I don't know, but I'll find out when I find Letho. My spies have confirmed your words. I suppose I must believe you. Now to the other matter. The mist, the wraiths, all that magic shit holding off my campaign. My mages, as usual, have proved useless. They blather on about higher magic, delayed curses and other hogwash, but nothing comes of it. This matter must be settled with a sword. A witcher's sword. Will you manage this task? Yeah, I'll manage. Excellent! Lift the curse, and you'll learn the meaning of royal generosity. And even should you fail to catch this Letho, I shall help you clear your name. Consider Deathmold at your disposal. He'll give you all the necessary information. Also, you are free to move about the camp and its environs from now on. Now, leave me alone. The curse was cast three years ago. Any sign it's been active in the interim? Is that important? Sire, we're not talking about a fortune told in a tent on market day, nor about some curse cast by a novice mage. This curse caused a solar eclipse and summoned hordes of specters. We're dealing with a complex spell that operates at several levels. Uncommon knowledge and skill were required to cast it. Lifting it will be even more difficult. If I'm going to deal with it, I need you to cooperate. Ah, the plague. So be it. As we forged our way through the fog, you claimed it was Glevisig's curse. Sabrina Glevisig's. She was a sorceress, my former advisor. I ordered her bound to a wagon wheel and burned alive. While dying, she cursed me and my lineage. That was three years ago. What did you condemn Sabrina for, sire? One year after the Peace of Sintra, I fought Demervin for Lormark. General Vandergrift commanded a part of my force. He forded the Pontar and joined battle on this field. It raged until evening when Sabrina Glevesig decided to take matters into her own hands. Fireballs rained down onto the battlefield. Three thousand men turned to bloody charred meat scraps. The fire consumed Kedwenis and Adernians alike. Knights boiled alive in their armor. Mad beasts howling with pain. War is for the honorable. When the likes of Levisig enter the fray, it turns into hell. What drove Sabrina to attack her own army? Any specific reason? I've heard none, not even speculation. She was my advisor, a member of the Council of Mages. For years I was forced to tolerate her excesses, schemes, court scandals. Was she loyal? Ha! <laughs> Only to herself. Sire, do you remember the curse itself? What exactly did Sabrina say? All she said at the time has been fulfilled to some degree. A star adorned with a bloody braid will cut across the heavens. Square coins from maritime depths will beguile the hearts of fools. Coins? Deathmold found a few such coins among soldiers accused of treason. Witcher, a word, if you will. Freak. You have no idea how delighted I am to work in tandem with you. True, I have no idea. Better times approach, Geralt, you shall see. I trust you're not bothered if I refer to you by name. Not at all. Wonderful. I feel we shall become great friends. That remains to be seen. Shake my hand, Geralt, to mark the beginning of our friendship. Uh, don't worry, I've no poison needle up my sleeve. I believe one can learn much about a man from his handshake. Learned anything? You have the handshake of a warrior. Strong, decisive, dominating. You're the conquering type. The kind women love. I was asking about the curse. Oh, of course. What would you like to know? Did you notice that not all the specters were aggressive? 
Hmm. Most would disappear when we neared them. I think the curse's power corrupts the ghosts of those who died in the battle, turning them into draugers. Draugers? Is that some professional name you witches have for specters? They're demons, Deathmold. Draugers are demons of war that arise on battlefields where the fighting was vicious and the slaughter particularly bloody. They are hatred and bloodlust in condensed form. The name matters little. Do you know how to rid us of these draugers? A silver sword's enough to send them to their rest. But as long as the curse remains active, new ones will appear. The soldiers' ghosts are the key. If we could reverse the tide of the battle... Don't delay. Grab your sword and start reversing. I'll need some symbols of war that belonged to the soldiers who perished here. Artifacts symbolizing hatred, death, courage, and faith. They have to be magically active and linked to those who died. Without them, I won't be able to summon the ghosts. Well, I've no idea how to find them. Apart from which I know little about war symbolism. I'll deal with the artifacts. I have another job for you. Have you dealt with curses before? I've cast a few in my time. One victim sprouted donkey's ears in a tail, another's house burned down. Nothing too serious. Shame. Have you removed curses, lifted spells? Never had the chance. But I mastered the theory involved. Best in my class at the Magic Academy. They don't teach you about curses like this one at Banard. Clevis's curse is a fourth level blood spell. It's also known as the Archmistress's curse. A misnomer, for they've been cast by generally crazed mages or priests, not necessarily women. You've done your homework. Explain this blood curse to me. An ordinary blood curse is a trivial thing. You let a little of your own blood. Best done at midnight, surrounded by lit candles. Sabrina had a whole pyre around her. Tell me about Glevisig's curse. Read about it for yourself. I have all the necessary literature. In fact, you only need the great encyclopedia of curses, spells and prophecies. And a volume compiled by Tessard of Rees and Margarita Loantil, Masters of Magic on Curses Selected Writings. Quite a tome. Are you sure Sabrina cast the curse? Positively. Curses of this kind are cast rarely. There have only been six confirmed cases. How many confirmed cases of their being lifted? One. By a team of mages led by Archmistress Francesca Finderbear, whence came the curse's other appellation. In any case, Sabrina Glevesig was part of that team. Small world, and one that just got a little uglier. That's not all. The curse that Francesca and Sabrina dealt with was meant to end the lives of the last of the Tyson dynasty, the rulers of Kovir. It was cast by Scarlet Rodelega, a very talented but completely mad man. A prophecy and an activator were also involved. I see. Sabrina just stole her curse from this Rodelega. Precisely. Beside which the king himself and a company of armed men witnessed her casting it. We've got our comet and murder. What about the coins? We have those as well. Not enough for you. No. Why do I get the feeling I've stumbled on some shameful secret? A state secret. If you don't tell me, your head of state may soon lose his head. There's a plot afoot within the military. Those involved share a symbol, a square coin adorned with a fish. Let's do this. I shall in no way hinder your investigation, and you will reveal to me anything you learn. Should I happen upon anything related to the curse? You'll let me know. So be it. Why is Henselt still breathing? He killed the priest. Why didn't he burst like a ripe tomato under a dwarf's heel? Perhaps Glevesig wishes Henselt to wait for imminent death. I don't think so. I know a few sorceresses. They're mean, true, but they also want results. Sabrina cast the curse while roasting at the stake. Not the most comfortable circumstances. I suspect she botched something. Are you suggesting Henselt may be safe? I'm suggesting he could be saved, provided we cut him off from the heart of the curse, the Battle of Spectres. It's the weakest link. How could we do that? I don't know yet, but I suspect I could summon Sabrina's ghost and force her to free Henselt. First, I need to learn the circumstances of her death. If I'm not mistaken, you need blood to cast a blood curse. Precisely, unachievable otherwise. Sabrina was bound to a wagon wheel. Where did she get enough blood? She put a spell on a soldier who gave her a coup de grace. It was easy, the minds of some soldiers are so uncomplicated. Sabrina needed one of them to strike her, shorten her suffering, but complete the curse. However, this is where she erred. That whore performed miracles, gathered the power, got the prophecy and activator right, but fell flat on her face on the simplest thing at the end. Don't get so excited. 
She chose a fool, a bungler. I heard he thrust five times with his spear, yet the witch's soul would not quit her corpse. There was no one guarding the pyre? It was one of the guards the sorceress chose for the task. His comrades were irate. He spoiled the show for them. The king was no longer anywhere near. In any case, blood flowed and the curse took root. Yes, but the harlot got her due. You're gonna help me, Deathmold. Of course, as the king ordered. Listen up. You'll do the paperwork. I get the feeling you like it. I'll need a number of protective rooms to summon Sabrina's ghost. They need to detain the sorceress's ghost and anything else that enters this world with it. Find something for me in your library. The runes need to be easy to produce. I haven't seen any artists around here. Apart from that, the Draugrs are likely to begin their forays in search of Henselt. When they leave the battlefield, they'll grow weaker. Your men should be able to handle them. Just equip them with silver-plated weapons. Henselt could also use something silver to defend himself. Over the entrance to his tent, hang a wreath of sunkfoil and fool's parsley. Inside, a fire fueled by juniper branches must burn at all times. Where will I get so much silver? Melt down your collection of pots for all I care. Just get it. Those aren't pots. They're silver vases of Naziah. Last of all, give Henselt an instructional talk. Explain that I'll need him. And what will you be doing? Drinking ale and fondling the camp women? There's that, yes. Though I'll also prepare to summon Sabrina's ghost and figure out what I need to send the fighting specters back to the afterlife. I'll drop by and give you more work as I learn about this curse. How did you divine that you might recover your memory by lifting the curse? The only diviner I've ever trusted told me. Interesting. That being... A drunkard and a fool in love. He's dead. But keep your nose out of my past. <laughs>